Jason here and today for retro rides we're starting a new series segment called Restore Explorer. Hi, I'm Rudy, owner, one of the owners of Hot Rod Technologies and we are in West London and uh, here we are, welcome. The very first car we started with was a Model A pickup truck which has had extensive work done to it. So when did you guys start this one then? This was... Well this was started about uh, nine years ago. Nine years uh, ago. But it's been in, in storage for oh, okay, a long time. Uh, and it's a project that we bring out and do a bit here and do a bit there. Uh, it's had a huge amount of fabrication work done to it. We've extended the cab by 11 inches, adding this section here. And what, how we did that was we got a couple of uh, original doors, cut them down and refabricated the lower and the back part. Uh, the roof is new. Chris, our main fabricator, did the roof. Because of the lack of space in a vehicle like this, uh, we then created this. Oh, nice. Which is, uh, normally would have been the fuel tank, but we've decided to try and get everything else in here. So we fabricated all of this uh, brake system. We fabricated the hinges. Uh, the, whole, the whole thing was custom made. Oh, wow. So is this your car? Or your this custom? is my business partner, Jim's okay, car. So this is the one that kind of made you guys start this thinking is, about... This is, yeah, one of the very first projects that uh, was done here. Oh, wow. Uh, and then we've done thing really um, very trick things like here. Because we've got a supercharged flathead engine going into this engine bay, uh, what we did, we built a, a, a geared box here uh, to shift over the the steering column. Okay then. Because otherwise it fouls and it hits the head. Okay then. So you had to um, gear and shift. Yeah, the which creates the a whole load of other problems, but this has uh, alleviated that problem. The rear bed is new. Yeah. We've cr we've built the chassis. It's got a nine-inch Ford rear end. Uh, the engine for this is that one on the stand over there. Oh wow. That supercharged flathead. Uh, a very, very uh, involved piece of uh, engineering. So it's, m it's mostly or mainly kind of Americana type, like cars well, and Well, mostly, like that. but uh, we do also do uh, classic cars, okay, then. which are not modified at all. Okay then. Uh, so people struggle a little bit with the name of the company, <laughs> but we uh yeah we 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 do a lot of classic cars okay then uh, so do you reckon you could maybe take us around and just have a look at what cars you have at the yeah moment? of course okay so here we have a, a typical example of of somebody who wants the car to remain stock okay so a 1966 mustang convertible and the chap's owned this for 30 years and has done very little to it uh, so we've gone through the entire car uh, and we are refreshing it. Suspension, gearboxes come out for a rebuild, engines getting uh, a total freshen up, headers, inlet manifold carb, just upgrading it, making it a, a quicker, faster car and a safer car. So the springs, the shocks, the brakes, everything's getting sorted out. So this is like, would you say like a mild restoration in, in, yeah, in terms I mean, of... In, this, this, I would class this as a mechanical restoration. Okay. The chap doesn't want anything else done to the interior or the paintwork, which I, I totally agree with. It, it, there's nothing wrong with it. You can live with a few little blemishes here and there. Yeah. But and then I guess that would lead us on to what you have the next on one, the other side. Yeah, which is, which is a totally different kettle of fish. Yeah. So what do we have here? So... This is a, a 68 Fastback Mustang. We had this car acid dipped and when it came back, the only thing that was savable was the roof panel and the pillars and the back, the back section here. Oh, wow. Oh, so from here upwards is the original car and everything else is a new car. Wow. Created with new panels. We have the facility, we have a jig 
and what we did, we jigged up the car, we had the dimensions, and then we created the, the new shell. Uh, and because of our, the work we do in one of our other units there, um, which is sort of heavy duty, big sort of truck stuff, we have um, access to some very serious, some very serious equipment. So this car uh, has over a thousand new spot welds in it. And in, in some places it's going through three sheets of metal uh, oh. and it, it can cope easily with that. The, no Mustang ever came out of the factory as strong as this. Oh gosh. And this isn't the first Mustang you guys have done? Though. No, no. We've just done a, a 67 fastback uh, for a customer who wanted full independent suspension and he wanted to retain the original 289 and the automatic gearbox, which we did. Uh, but he wanted it to handle and brake and steer okay, like then. a new car. And that car actually debuted at last year, or last January's Autosport show up at the NEC. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was a nice car. Very, very nice car. This is a 1932 Ford Model B, uh, which is the quintessential hot rod. Okay then. Uh, this is the, the one, in various forms, as a roadster pickup or a, a three or a five window coupe. So this isn't yours then? No, no. <laughs> is, this some, is this the kind of car that you'd probably like to, to own or have in your collection? Yeah, I mean, if it, if it were my choice, I would have a roadster. Okay then. Uh, not a coupe, but I would have a roadster. Uh, and what did you guys um, do to so this? So this car, we actually built it in conjunction with another rod shop. Uh, so, but we actually did all the finishing off. We we sort sorted out the engine, all the interior, uh, the paint. We painted it. We did all the bodywork. Uh, we did all the trim on the inside, which uh, I'll show you. We also. Uh, changed it to a left-hand drive, uh, sorry, a right-hand drive car from left-hand drive. Um, the, oh, beautiful. the wooden, uh, the dash, the wooden effect on the dash is actually painted metal. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it came as a metal uh, dash, as do the window mouldings. Uh, they were hand-painted and then we lacquered it six times and flattened it down. Wow. You just can't get that wood anymore no um so that's what we did that's beautiful has it been on the road yet or has it been out and about no no it's li literally what we're doing now is just tidying up uh, the last few little niggles and then it will be on the road. Probably for next season? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. So the owner has a garage then, hopefully. Oh, yes. Yeah. So do any of the cars that you create, uh, do anyone like daily it or anything? Do you have people? Yes, they do. Stuff? Yeah. Funnily enough, the one in front, the red coupe. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a central London car, Are you believe it or not. Oh, really? Yeah. It's okay, a correctly then. registered 1940 Ford. Oh, wow. So it's a, a historic vehicle. So he's just going to be using it as a daily just to potter about and stuff? Yeah, more or less. I mean, obviously it's raining, he won't be using it. No. But uh, yeah, it's, this chap lives in central London. Wow. And intends to use it. That's quite a thing, isn't it? And how were you guys involved in, in this Everything. In this well, I actually, the long story to this car, I actually uh, am great friends with the original owner who imported it from Pomona, from the Pomona swap meet in 1982. Oh, wow. And uh, we were looking for a car, uh, my business partner and I, to, we wanted a 40 coupe to build, just as another hot rod. And 
a long story short, but this customer wanted this car. And so he bought it from us and then we carried on the build. So it's got a small block Chevy uh, V8 with a art car, automatic transmission. It's, it's got everything. Wow. It's got a, this is called a front runner system here. And it's uh, made by a company called Vintage Air in America. Okay, then, yeah. And it's air conditioning with all the other ancillaries off it. Oh, amazing. And it just bolts straight, everything just bolts straight to the front of the engine. I guess you've got oh you've got a whole other bits and pieces around as yeah well. this is a, a 1969 um, Oldsmobile which we are fitting fuel injection to okay uh, and other other suspension modifications uh, very nice car iconic car yeah um, this this little thing is a TR4 Oh, wow. Which has just come over from Florida, and we are doing a full build on this. Oh, nice. Uh, top to tail, everything. What engine do you think is going on? No, it's having a st everything standard. Okay, There's going to be no modification to this whatsoever. So a kind of a Concours a, type build? Yeah, a completely standard Concours. Wow. The, the brief from the customer is, I want it like the day it rolled out the factory. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what we do. Do you think you'll add any trick bits and pieces or totally? Uh, it'll have things like uh, electronic uh, distributor. Okay then. So Just yeah. stuff that will make it run nicer. Obviously a new loom. Yeah. Um, maybe fuel injection. Okay. Then. But those two things alone will just transform how this car drives. Uh, the one above is uh, my own and my daughter's uh, race car project. Okay. So that's something that, uh, yeah, we'll we'll do it when we get the chance. Yeah. It's going to be a pretty trick car. Yeah. Tube chassis. Uh, yeah. So is she going to be racing it or yourself? We both will. She went and got her racing license uh, uh, end of last year, and so uh, spent years years watching me race. Okay. So yeah. Uh, and she's a total petrol head. Oh, so, so you used to race then? Or I did, yeah. What did you used to race? I used to race a, a 65 Corvette and a 1967 Camaro. Oh, wow, okay. Then. And a 65 Mustang Fastback. Here in the U I guess yeah, here in the UK. Yeah, yeah, in the Heritage Series. Oh, okay. So we, we were a support race to the touring cars. Oh, okay. Then. Which was great fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so would that, would that be all American cars racing? Was that well, no, it was all sorts of things. It'd be like... Uh, E-types, Aston Martins, okay, Cobras, oh, wow. okay. uh, lots of very, very quick cars, big muscle cars, so, and very exciting because uh, we'd often have a rolling start. Okay, then. You, know, you imagine 30 plus cars, each well over 500 horsepower, yeah, and just all of them V8s. Bloody hell. Uh, it, it was fantastic. So how did you personally get into the American car scene? Because I guess we're in England, I yeah. thought you'd have, I know there's a lot of shops that do obviously English marks, you know, just like the Fords and you know, the smaller stuff, but then to find an American hot, well, I guess, restoration Well, place. my my dad was always into American cars, okay. and he actually took me to the very first Santa Pod meeting oh. um, back in 1966. Oh, wow. Yeah, long time ago. <laughs> I know I don't look it. I, I, I look younger than I actually am. Uh, yeah, so 
Uh, that's how it started. Oh, okay. And we used to go to watch the, uh, the original sort of American muscle car races between the Mustangs and the Camaros at Brands Hatch. Okay then. And I can remember standing in the old wooden stand at Brands with them going past and the whole place used to shake. Yeah. And I thought, oh, this is fantastic. So did you think at any point that, from being that young, do you think, did you ever think that you'd be doing something like this? No. No. <laughs> no. No. What did you th like? What did you like do before you did this? If well, I had I was I was involved with a family company, okay. my family company, which is a large uh, uh, catering company, okay, then. food industry. Yeah. So yeah, and then we closed that about uh, nine years ago, and that's I just looked for something to do. Oh, amazing. And so this is what I've always done. I've always built cars. I've always raced cars. You know, when I was seventeen, I built my first car uh, and then and that was an American, American car? No, it was an English Ford 8, a 1938 Ford 8, okay, then. which went on to uh, become a well-known car in this country. Oh. Uh, yeah, so after that I got the bug and I always, always drove American cars and built American cars and raced them as well. At the moment, uh, well, I have a little Topolino, 1938 Topolino. Oh, I think I saw your bone Instagram. stock. Is yeah. that the one that you were driving? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who was laughing in the video? Oh, that was my, my daughters okay. were laughing, yeah. <laughs> He's so freaking happy with himself. <laughs> we, we put all our stuff on Instagram now. Okay, then, so yeah. What's your, what's your Instagram? Well, um, uh, hot underscore rod underscore tech. But cool. Hot Rod Technologies, it will come up. Oh, amazing. Uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I bought that car from, it was a deceased uh, collection. Okay, then. Uh, the, the owner died, and then they sold off the collection. And I bought that car, and it hadn't been run for 27 years. Oh, wow. So I actually managed to get it going. A nice car, but um, I just don't use it. It's okay, so then. small, yeah. and it's so slow, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I thought about driving it to work, but I live 47 miles away. I'd have to start off on about Wednesday to get yeah, it that's Friday, it. yeah. And what is it, a, top, a Topolino? Topolino. Is that like Italian? An Italian? Yeah, a Fiat yeah. Topolino. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's what, the original Topolino. What size engines were, were those? It's 500 and something cc. Oh, wow. So you don't want to stick in like some like a motorbike engine in it or something no, like that to come no, to no, work? No. No. <laughs> well, the Amer I've just sold it to a guy in San Francisco, believe oh, wow. it or not. Oh, amazing. And uh, in, in America, what they do, uh, all the top leaners, or most of the top leaners in America, are uh, drag cars. Oh, really? They turn them into drag cars, yeah. What kind of engines would they put in them? Normally a, what, a Chevy. And then they're all, re I guess they're rear wheel drive as well? Or yeah. Or they just stick yeah. a drivetrain in? An al altered um, drag car, yeah. In that little thing? Awesome little thing. <laughs> it's, it's so tiny, so tiny. I, me I measured it for the wheelbase to put it onto our transporter yeah. and the wheel from one wheel to the other is one meter. One meter? One meter. Bloody the gap it. between the tires. Yeah, it is tiny. So is it quite top heavy? Like, so if you're going around a corner no. too fast, is it no. alright? You, you can't go anywhere fast. Okay. <laughs> <That's it>. <laughs> <laughs> So that was a walk around Hot Rod Technologies. Hope you liked it. And if you like it, leave a comment and let us know if there's anywhere else that we should go and visit. Cheers, bye. Going to central London and into any of the car parks below those big uh, buildings, buildings yeah. full of classic cars. Yeah. Some some have even got sections where the classic cars are, where, oh, you really? know, a gated section just for the classic car collections. You need to tell me where those are. No. Maybe one. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, <I> get it. <laughs>